Hey guys, what's up? Dingo Crikey here with another commentary video, this time discussing a topic on Transformers Robots in Disguise, and one that probably isn't discussed a whole lot, that is, in Season 1, what has the show done right? So this is a topic that I feel definitely needs to be covered, and it's one that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Uh, somewhat recently, I did get a comment from someone, you know, kind of complaining about me just ripping on robots in disguise, even though I feel like I've been pretty fair to the show throughout its run, so don't really know where that's coming from, but uh, I was thinking about doing this topic anyways. Because there is just a lot of stuff that I think we do kind of pick on Robots in Disguise for. Uh, the community in general really seems to have taken negatively to a lot of things about the show. Though, you know, people have found positive in it, and, you know, I certainly have. Giving the show a fair shot, going through the first 26 episodes, there were definitely a lot of ups and downs throughout. However, after the first season, I do have the feeling that it's on the weaker end of Transformers shows. At the same time, I feel like it's getting a little bit of the blunt of the community just because it's coming after Transformers Prime, which was pretty well received amongst people, myself included. Uh, it isn't my favorite show, however, I think Prime was definitely an incredible Transformers series, and if you're talking about production, it was... You know, probably the best. I mean, uh, you know, maybe second to Beast Wars, but, uh, you know, it's definitely right up there. Robots in Disguise, on the other hand, uh, just seems a little bit, I don't want to say amateur in comparison, but, you know, definitely not as good. Hence, a lot of people tend to look at everything that the show has done wrong. So, here I'm going to be giving my personal opinions on what the show has done right so far. And I'm sure some people are going to disagree with my points, so I want to make note this is an opinion-based video. If you don't like my opinions, just understand that I'm just putting them out there. I'm not trying to force them on anyone, and uh, yeah, be respectful and all of that. Anyways, so I've narrowed down to five main things. Uh, number five being that Robots in Disguise hasn't forgot about Transformers Prime. And I'm sure some people might be thinking, what? I'm sure if someone mentioned this to me, I might be initially a little bit confused. And I think the tone of Transformers Prime to that of Robots in Disguise is going to be looked at as one of the big differences. However, in name of events, you know, they do keep it uh, pretty well connected. They definitely don't do it perfectly, but, okay, let's compare it to something like the way Armada and Energon were connected. I mean, it, it was an absolute disaster. Energon was so different from Armada, and not just on tone, it just introduced so many new concepts, had no mentions of previous things that, you know, probably should have had mention, such as, you know, the return of Optimus Prime and how that worked out after the end of Armada, and that kind of stuff. In Robots in Disguise, we've still had mention of things in Transformers Prime, such as Starscream and um, even Megatron, you know, the events that happened with Optimus Prime, and, you know, them keeping him in this state if they were just doing the Energon treatment, he would probably just be back with no explanation. But most impressive to me, and this might be getting into spoiler territory, so you might want to skip the next minute if you haven't finished the first season, is at the end of season one, them connecting the whole Unicron arc to Megatronus's plan. I was wondering if they were going to do this with Megatronus wanting Earth so bad, but um, it was really cool to see them bring this in there, especially since it's something I would honestly was kind of shocked that they did, considering it would be so weird for a new fan to hear. And um, that was really impressive to me. And like I said, there were other little things throughout the series. The tone is definitely different, and it isn't perfect, but yeah, I can respect them for the tributes they do make to Transformers Prime. So, moving on to number four, and that would be the combination of previous and new elements, concepts, storylines, etc., and giving a twist to the old. So, that's kind of a mouthful, but basically, I think that Robots in Disguise did a nice job at being original with new concepts, and then with a previously used Transformers concepts, giving sort of an homage, but doing something different with them, as we've seen with uh, the Minicons. They do kind of 
combined in some cases, like they did in Transformers Armada, which was their debut series, but they also, you know, added a new twist to it and just handled them in a different way. They're no longer uh, these little guys who are kind of like the center of the war between the Autobots and Decepticons and are used to power up Transformers, are kind of treated like second-class citizens. Um, almost have a different level of intelligence, too. You know, they just handled them in a different way, and um, as an Armada fan, I think that's really cool. Much better than them just taking it straight from Armada. This was one of the things I didn't really like about a lot of Transformers animated homages. Like, um, for example, them bringing back Spike Witwicky and, you know, him just, like, looking exactly the same and stuff like that. There were a few other things in the show. It's been a while, but it just felt really clunky and uh, sort of cringeworthy in my opinion, uh, sort of like their homage to Rat Trap too. I just wasn't a big fan of it. Personally, I think Robots in Disguise has done a much better job at homaging the old, though to give it credit, Animated didn't always do a bad job, but they seem to have this attitude like, oh, look how homage-ish we're being, and yeah, you know, this is a throwback for the old fans, and it... I don't know, it kind of had an annoying feel to it. I think Robots in Disguise has handled it much better. Uh, we also see them kind of do the Headmaster concept as well with the uh, Snake Decepticon. We also see them introducing some of their own concepts, the most obvious, you know, with uh, all of the different Decepticon characters and their abilities. Granted, in the show they kind of have a Monster of the Week feel, however, with some of them I could see them being used in the future of Transformers and possibly becoming a nice part of the universe. So that's something I really appreciate about Robots in Disguise, which kind of leads into the next point, and that is that there are loads of new characters in Robots in Disguise. Some people are probably going to disagree on this, but the aspect of new characters was very important to me, especially because in recent years we see so much repetition of a lot of core Transformers characters, as if, you know, the Generations lines weren't enough. I don't have a problem with those, but then in the movies, you know, we have Megatron, we have Ratchet, we have Ironhide, Optimus, Bumblebee. I mean, I love Transformers Prime, but even in that, the core cast is really one that we see a lot. I mean, Optimus is G1, RC, Bumblebee, Ratchet. Then we have Bulkhead from Animated, and all of these characters are very similar to previous versions of themselves, with the exception of RC, and um, even her design is very distinct, so I would kind of uh, pull her out of that equation. You could probably do the same with Smokescreen. However, he did come a lot later in the show, so he was only in for like, um, I don't know, maybe 30-35%. I don't know if he really counts. Another big thing we had was the Megatron and Starscream conflict, and um, I'm a big Starscream fan. Uh, Megatron, he has his place in Transformers, of course, but this is something that's really been done to death. I mean, we had Transformers Animated, Transformers Cybertron had its own take on this. Armada was really different, but, you know, it still was the whole Starscream against Megatron type thing. For me, not seeing a lot of these same tropes, these same characters in Robots in Disguise is very refreshing. I mean, for one thing, the whole Decepticon cast is pretty much uh, different. And for the most part, even original, with some throwbacks to guys like Kickback. But he's really nothing like any of his previous versions, so I would say he doesn't even count from what we've seen of him. And then as for the Autobot cast, while a lot of the names have been used before, they feel like and look like pretty original characters. Um, Strongarm is a very original character. We haven't really seen as someone like her, especially as being part of the main cast before. Same with Sideswipe. I mean, he has the name Sideswipe, similar color scheme, but he feels like a very original character. Uh, Grimlock's obviously completely different from previous renditions. At first, felt kind of weird, but um, I've kind of liked what they've done with it, though some people try to connect uh, this whole continuity with War for Cybertron may find problems with that. Personally, i never seen a connection anyways, but getting back on track... Uh, then we have Drift. You know, he's come a little bit later, but definitely way earlier than Smokescreen. Uh, he feels a lot like a poorly done uh, IDW Drift, so yeah, I don't hate him, but I can't say a whole lot positive there. But I just like the freshness with the characters. It's something we don't get to see a whole lot, and I hope we see a lot more of in the future. That kind of leads me into the next topic, deals with the characters, 
and that is the conflict we see amongst the cast. Now, a lot of people got really, really annoyed by this, and I got a bit it got annoying at some points, but I really, really enjoyed all the bickering we did get to see amongst the members of the Autobot team, especially because looking back at Transformers history, this isn't something we really see, and it makes them more entertaining to watch. I mean, comparing it to some of the other Autobot cast, um, Armada, it's a personal favorite of mine, but, uh, like, the Decepticons were so much more interesting to watch just because, you know, they had this dysfunctional family-type feel to them. Same thing with Transformers Prime. You know, the Autobots were kind of cool, but it was like Optimus was the voice of God and any conflict could be put down by him for the most part. And, you know, everyone would just get along and do the mission and act really serious from that point on. Robots in Disguise, in my opinion, harkens back to some of the shows such as Beast Wars. And uh, some people are going to want to kill me for this, but Beast Machines, where we got to see a lot of really cool conflict between the characters that added a lot more spice to the cast. So far, it definitely hasn't been as serious as we've seen it get in a Beast Machine, such as the relationship between Cheetor and Optimus Primal, or like a Beast Wars, Rat Trap, and Dinobot, some of the other ones in there I'm sure you could look at as well. But, you know, it's its own show, it's handling its own way, and I think it just adds a lot more believability and uh, realness to the feeling of the cast. It also provides a lot of funny moments. The show doesn't always succeed, but it definitely is entertaining. Now, while I know Robots in Disguise probably will never get super, super serious, uh, and I don't really want to see it uh, step that boundary and get really weird as far as a tone shift, and, you know, we had some shows like Teen Titans do that sometimes, and I wasn't always crazy about it, so I still have to say that Robots in Disguise really hasn't used the conflict for a whole lot of development with the characters, and that's where my problem lies with the character conflict. For me, I find it enjoyable to watch. I know a lot of people can't stand it. Um, a lot of people would just like Optimus there to you know, make everything perfect and make it a very serious war between Autobots and Decepticons, but, you know, I think it's cool, but they definitely could do more with it. Nevertheless, I really appreciate the creators of the show for giving us something different in Transformers. And that brings me to my number one point, kind of dealing with characters, but I think this warrants its own point, and that is the fact that we get to see two new leaders of the Autobots and Decepticons. Now, I probably could have put this with one of the two previous categories. However, I think that it is significant enough to warrant its own slot. Having Robots in Disguise introduce Bumblebee as the leader and a, for all intents and purposes, new character as the leader of the Decepticons was one of the most exciting things coming into the series for me personally and even after season one i think it came across very well i mean it isn't the best start to having different leaders that we could possibly have but i think they did a nice job as they used this opportunity to have different personalities in the leadership roles i mean optimus and megatron's personalities vary from series to series however with the return of peter cullen and frank Wells we've seen a lot of repetition of their characters you know they're a little bit different from time to time but basically the same thing you know Bumblebee is a totally different leader than Optimus and not only does he have a different personality but we get to see him coming from a new perspective as someone who really hasn't done this before though I would still argue it would have been cooler to see smoke scream from Prime in that position I would definitely take Bumblebee as long as he doesn't act the way he does in the movies and as for Steeljaw you know, I do kind of have some problems with him because I don't think he ever lived up to being a super original feeling character. I've put it this way before that he feels a little bit like a poor man's Megatron. Now, I do feel like toward the end of the season, 
they developed him a little bit more, made him feel a little bit more distinct, but they never took him to his full potential. However, we do know he'll probably be around in Season 2 unless they never explain what happens to him, so we're going to see more stuff with this character. Nevertheless, at this point, he's established himself as being sort of in Megatron's place. You know, it wasn't one of these things where we have Starscream lead for a little while, and then Megatron comes back, and everything's back to normal. I mean, even with Megatronus coming in the season finale, it doesn't look like he's going to be leading the Decepticons from this point onward. He's sort of like the big bad, but chances are we aren't going to see him very much. And I think all of this is really cool to see, and I think it's kind of important for Transformers as a whole, as in this area, Transformers, at least the cartoons, the films, haven't had a whole lot of expanding. And, you know, you might argue, well, why is it bad to always have Optimus and Megatron? I mean, I guess it isn't necessarily bad, but I don't also see anything wrong with them changing it up from time to time. And at the same time, like I said, Megatron and Optimus aren't always the most interesting characters, so seeing a different perspective is definitely cool. And on a more grim note, um... They probably are going to want to start uh, buffing up Bumblebee as sort of the leader or another character for the simple fact that, well, Peter Cullen is pretty much the voice of Optimus Prime at this point. And the guy is getting up there in years, so, you know, they're probably trying to get some of the focus off of him. I mean, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news, but, you know... Probably something Hasbro and all of them do want to think about because, you know, they could bring in other Optimus voice actors from this point onward, but, you know, they're never going to be Peter Cullen. And it's not like it was in the past where uh, Peter Cullen, I don't think, wanted to do the voice in Beast Wars, so we had uh, Gary Chalk take his place. This would be, you know, if it's him passing on, that might feel a little bit weird having another voice actor just step in right away. So having other characters take the spotlight may actually be the more practical thing to do from the perspective of people running Transformers. But even with the depressing stuff aside, I think it is good to have other leaders, and I think Steeljaw and Bumblebee being in charge has definitely enriched the show, and it probably wouldn't be as good if it was just Optimus and Megatron again, and it really wouldn't make sense them being in the whole situation. So, those are my thoughts on it, my list of five things Robots in Disguise has done right. I know some of them kind of overlapped, but, you know, I want to put five on the list and uh not to sound negative but it was a little bit hard putting it together i mean there are things about the show such as the voice acting being good and the action sequences but uh that's a little bit different it feels almost like a cheat so i wanted to come up with things that you know feel a little bit more relevant but, you know, if you guys have your own list, maybe those are some of the things you would include, you can drop off your list in the comment section below. What do you think are the best things about Robots in Disguise? Or maybe you think there's nothing good about the show? Let me know in the comment section below, along with your topic suggestions for future commentary videos, such as this one, or discussing things dealing with Transformers 5, the upcoming Combiner Wars Machinima series, the Titan Returns toy line, whatever it might be, drop it off in the comment section below, and keep up with the channel for more regular Transformers news and commentary. You can also follow me on Twitter for more regular updates. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and have a good one, guys. I'll see you soon.